What's up, guys? We are outside the Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag booth here at PAX East 2013. We got to catch up with Darby McDevitt from the development team yesterday. Check out what he had to say about Assassin's Creed 4 setting sail with Black Flag. The year is 1715, and outlaws rule the Caribbean seas. Here, you're at the helm of an adventure unlike any other, charting your own course through a treacherous world, where events are unpredictable and outcomes uncertain. What's up, guys? We are here with Darby McDevitt from the Assassin's Creed 4 team. And uh, as you've seen, it's Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, and it is one of the most expansive worlds where you guys are going to a lot of really cool places and getting into a lot of cool piracy stuff. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I think the extent of our map probably goes from the tip of southern Florida down below, well below Jamaica, to the, and then over to the Yucatan Peninsula and to the kind of the uh, west coast of Haiti. And so you can sort of free roam uh, with your, your jackdaw, the, uh, your, your brig, your pirate brig, free roam all around those ocean, visit uh, over 50 locations, and uh, yeah, just kind of explore and, uh, and plunder as you see fit. And one of the cool things about having your own ship is that you can actually customize it. You can get this thing built up to basically go to war and really, really yeah kick some ass with yeah. it. Yeah, you'll, you'll start the, when you first acquire this brig, it'll, it'll be sort of outfitted with, uh, you know, just a minimal, minimal number of cannons. And uh, you're gonna spend a lot of the game upgrading it with all kinds of things, cannons, sails, new hulls, and things like that. And uh, that will not only make you feel more powerful, but you're actually going to be able to, you know, defeat enemies that maybe you run into early in the game that just, uh, you know, uh, kick your ass at, at the beginning, and then maybe you return a few hours later, and now you can you can give it back. You know, so there's a nice way, there's a nice gameplay progression with the with the ship combat, where we can block parts of the game off through gameplay means, and not just throwing up barriers, you know, artificial barriers. So that's a that's a something kind of I think a bit new to the Assassin's Creed franchise. And another thing that's really new is is the piracy idea itself. And as always with Assassin's Creed, there's so much research done to the historical context of it. How hard was it to kind of figure out all this stuff, the golden age of piracy, and bring all of these pirates to life? I mean, we've seen Blackbeard, and I know that there's a few more. There's Calico Jack that's coming in. There's a lot of stuff there. How hard was it to kind of find all of that? Um, well, there's a... Thankfully, there's a tremendous number of books that have been written on the subject, and we just sort of read a lot of them, picked and choose our favorite characters. The ones that, um, there's a great book called uh, The Pirate Republic uh, by uh, Colin Woodard, which really told the story of how all, a bunch of these pirates came and settled in Nassau uh, for a good four or five years. And so we use that as a jumping off point. Like, if we can get all those characters there, then it's really easy to write a story where our, our, our pirate character um, uh, meets all of them and interacts with all of them and from there we sort of jump off and we we have fun with playing with this idea that okay we're gonna create a pirate character not an assassin precisely and he's going to kind of bounce back and forth between this assassin and Templar war and he's gonna kind of navigate his way through it and he's gonna be trained by assassins but he's not necessarily gonna follow their creed because he's a at, at his heart he's a pirate and we want players to experience what it's like to be a pirate for quite a lot of the game. Um, so that we had a lot of fun with that, making a very, very new and unique uh, character uh, for this iteration. is very, very different than the sort of slightly more noble characters that you play. He's almost an anti-hero. So. And with that comes a lot of exploration. And now one of the cool things that we saw is there's underwater exploration where you can kind of find wreck ships and find those treasures. How cool was building that world and kind of developing these treasures that just live under the sea, not like SpongeBob, yeah. but, <laughs> but really cool treasures underneath? Um, as I think a lot of experienced gamers know, like underwater gameplay is pretty difficult to, to pull off and make it exciting. So we've put a lot of effort into, into making these underwater sections uh, compelling and um, I think it'll be a surprise. Uh, the, you know, a, sh a massive shipwreck is a big, is a big area. So, you know, using a diving bell, we're, we're kind of adopting diving bell technology because diving bells were actually invented around 1680. So we like to like dig up little historical facts like that and stick them into our games. And so with the access of a diving bell, you can go down and explore these deep, deep, deep wrecks. And uh, hopefully it's very, a very evocative 
and fun uh, atmosphere that uh, feels a little fresh, you know. Because uh, underwater gameplay, it's difficult, so, you know, we'll get it right. And even more on the exploration front, we did see that there was jungles, and we did see my personal favorite, Havana, was, uh, was all there. Um, now, the, the jungles themselves, that just seems like an immersive open world that you can just yeah. kind of, it's kind of a choose your own yeah, adventure yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, jungles are very, very dense, so we couldn't, so while we, we definitely have, like, Edward has, uh, Edward has tree running abilities in this, because as a sailor, he has, uh, uh, a great balance. There's a saying among sailors: every finger's a fish hook, meaning they get to like you know they're they're very good at climbing the rigging and stuff like that. So, but but jungle environments don't lend themselves to these like open free running paths because they're very dense. You run into vines and 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 tight foliage. So we've designed the jungles in a way that that the tree running is slightly different, feels different. Uh, certainly in more open environments like uh, Kingston or something, there's some tree running to be had because the, the, the the spaces between trees are much more appropriate to like the kind of stuff you see in AC3. But the jungles are, are incredibly dense, incre like lots of opportunities for stealth and hiding and and um, and tree running, but in a slightly with a slightly different flavor. So it's it's gonna I think it's gonna be a unique environment for people. Awesome. And then when we get out of the jungles and when we get back to the ships, because the, the the naval warfare was very very big. Boarding is very, very big on, on Assassin's Creed 4. How important is it to get on that ship and take it? Well, the, the, one of the big, uh, but sort of almost invisible innovations that we've done in, a, in this game is that um, in AC3, the, the naval combat was, where they were individual missions, right? Um, in our game, we've spent a lot of time making the whole ocean systemic. There's you know, trade routes and there's enemy ships coming at you at all times. You're free to go in any direction you want, take any ship you want. And so part of this, one major part of this is the boarding where if you disable a, a large ship and then you want to fully take it and take its plunder and, and maybe even press some of the guys into your crew, you have to uh, then, you're given some objectives. You have to sail up to it from any angle you want, engage that boarding, and then objectives pop up. These are the things you have to do to take the ship. And it'll be, you know, it'll be different, it'll be slightly different every time. And then you're free to sort of take the ship. You can dive off the back of your ship, swim all the way around, go up the back and do your business, or you can go up to the rigging, accomplish those goals. It all depends on what the goals are and how you choose to sort of accomplish it. So it's going to be a very robust system. We kind of call them like Borgia Towers at sea. And each one will be a kind of a unique experience because there's lots of different types of ships to board and there's lots of different ways to sort of approach that boarding. Awesome, awesome. Guys, get ready because this is going to be one of the most open world, immersive Assassin's Creed you're ever going to see. And especially, I mean, it's piracy and, and, and that's just damn awesome. Get ready to set sail this fall. Darby, I thank you so much. Right, thank you.